When you are aboard your carrier, do you know how far you can communicate with your radios? Do you have your radar tuned for maximum target detection range and minimum clutter? Do your pilots know which flight elevation will minimize their chances of being detected by the enemy? Do your operators understand how the current atmospheric conditions are affecting operations? I'm Peter Guest. I'm a research professor of meteorology at the Naval Postgraduate School. I've been doing research here for almost 35 years. My specialty is making measurements in the atmosphere. I've been to the Arctic and Antarctic and over 70 cruises in my lifetime. Thanks to the support of Cruiser at MPS, I have developed a system which has the potential for improving the Navy's battle space awareness, particularly in the cyberspace world of electronic maneuver warfare. Radio communications, radar, jamming systems, electronic surveillance, laser beams, particle beams, and just plain eyesight rely on electromagnetic radiation. Understanding how atmospheric ducting impacts these systems helps us complete our missions and potentially disrupts our adversaries' missions. Ducting is caused primarily by a rapid decrease in humidity as elevation increases. In the presence of surface atmospheric ducts, radio signals are trapped between the sea surface and the duct top. Ducts can result in greatly extended radar coverage, which can create ghost images where features appear much closer than they really are. Ducts can also cause more clutter or unwanted noise and create radar holes just above the duct where detection is not possible. So this begs the question, how can the Navy more accurately and reliably understand the effects of atmospheric ducting and other important atmospheric and weather impacts in a cost-efficient manner? We think the answer is to use unmanned aerial systems as platforms for atmospheric measurements. Today, we were testing this system out. First, we were just testing the idea of flying the UAV from a small vessel to make sure that everything worked okay. And then we tried some flights by putting this radiosonde sensor on here. What we also did today was that we, we have a weather balloon system on here. So we put, put this on a balloon and then we launched the balloon and flew the UAV up right alongside the balloon as, as it was launching. So this way we can compare the data from the two and, and uh, see how well this is doing as a, as a measurement system. Obviously the Navy is interested in how the environment is impacting their systems. What you think of as weather, stormy, stormy winds, precipitation. The atmosphere affects electromagnetic systems. And so to forecast those, you need to put input data into numerical models. And so typically that's done with a radio sign system. It can also be done with satellites, but the problem with either of these systems, and especially the satellites, is that they don't collect data right near the surface. And if you want to be able to predict how it's going to affect the systems, you need to measure the temperature, pressure, and humidity very accurately and with high vertical resolution right near the surface. And that's where these measurements come in because we're able to fly this up and down near the surface. And also to do several profiles because turbulent fluctuations mean if you just do one profile like a balloon, it might not be really represent the mean. So with this, we can do several different profiles and get an idea of what the mean conditions are and also a much better idea of the variability. Eventually I envisioned that you could put this in the back of a Navy ship, for example, and just push a button and it would take off, perform some soundings, and come back and land automatically. Electromagnetic systems will become more important to the U.S. Navy, especially as we expand our capabilities in the area of electromagnetic maneuver warfare. I'm Peter Guest. For more information on this research and other research sponsored by Cruiser, visit the Cruiser website. <laughs>